In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and god called the firmament heaven so the evening and the morning were the second day then god said let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and god called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas and god saw that it was good then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. For the next 1,500 years or so, the universe was assumed to look something very close to this. This model of cosmology was adopted by Jewish scholars and further fortified by Greek scholars. As in Judaism, Greek tradition largely held that the earth was the center of the universe. Ptolemy of Alexandria, a mathematician, astronomer, and philosopher, published his version of geocentrism around 150 CE. Heliocentrism, the idea that the sun was the center of the universe, had been explored around 400 years earlier by Aristarchus of Samos, but the idea didn't take hold. The theory of heliocentrism was later rediscovered by Copernicus in about 1514. Though he would openly discuss heliocentrism, he resisted publishing his findings. His work on heliocentric theory wouldn't be published until about the time he died in 1543. Copernican ideas of heliocentric theory were picked up by Galileo in the next century. Galileo published his work in 1632 called Dialogue concerning the two chief world systems. It was a comparative analysis of geocentrism versus Copernican heliocentrism. Unfortunately for Galileo, his ideas concerning Copernican heliocentric theory were seen as heresy by the church, and for good reason. The Bible, where all Christian authority is derived, clearly states that the earth is unmoved and unmovable. According to Bible cosmology, the earth can never move. Galileo had to face an inquisition on heresy charges because his ideas of cosmology were contradictory to biblical cosmology, and since the Bible was the infallible word of God, clearly Galileo's research meant that God was either incorrect or lying. Even though Galileo was charged with heresy based on the idea that the earth moved, this wasn't the only problem of Christian cosmology. The Bible clearly states in the Genesis account that there is a firmament. A firmament in Greek and Hebrew texts is something similar to a fortress, vault, tent, dome, or cliff. The firmament is well defined. It is, in essence, the sky, though in some cases it's also called heaven. And the stars are little points of light stuck to the sky. Also noteworthy is that the sun and moon travel within the firmament. It's where God lives, and birds travel through the firmament as well. And according to the biblical account, the sun had nothing to do with daytime. Day and night were created before the sun and moon, and the moon was a light just like the sun. Of course, we now know that the moon isn't really a light. It only reflects light. Clearly, when Galileo's ideas are expanded on, the effects of heliocentric theory on all of Christian cosmology is devastating. The Bible isn't just wrong, its cosmological model is flat-out fictional. Galileo would die a controversial figure, but his ideas that the Earth did in fact revolve around the Sun, while also rotating once a day, did eventually win over geocentrism.